get to you in a minute, Rachel. Uh, anybody in here know what a hemorrhoid is? <laughs> a hemorrhoid is described as uh, thin tissue around your anus or rectum that fills with blood. It can get itchy and irritable and sometimes painful. Now, you may have questions such as, what is a hemorrhoid? <laughs> questions such as, is what I have a hemorrhoid? <laughs> I had these types of questions <laughs> and so much more a couple years ago as I was gearing up and preparing for my last hunt of the season. And, uh, <laughs> oh my God. Uh, I always kind of fancy myself a, a pretty healthy individual, but when you start packing around something that feels like, you know, more than likely like, uh, let's say a uh, marble, <laughs> but mentally you're, you're thinking like golf ball in between your butt cheeks. You start really recounting and going through the days and hours of maybe some unhealthy times. And you're thinking, life? What led me to this? And I am gearing up for a very special, special time. And it's when I get to go back home to Montana, I get to reconnect with a very, very good friend of mine um, that I, I met going to a gear swap at the University of Montana. It's a guy named Kyler. And uh, I refer to him as the pot-bellied stallion. Um, <laughs> And, you know, you kind of feel dudes out in the outdoor world, right? Like macho, and you don't uh, ask questions because that would just be too easy and efficient. You're like, yeah, lots of, like, ambiguous statements. And then you got to connect the dots. And uh, this is my time to, like, get back home, go out and hunt with the guy that... Uh, you know, we, we really hit like that power learning curve of hunting together and, and started like figuring stuff out. And uh, I'm so looking forward to this, but I think, my God, I'm dying. I, I have a tumor that is protruding from my rectum, like somewhere like this. And I don't quite know I'm like, okay, if I investigate this, it could lead me to some choices that would not allow me to go on the hunt. And if that were to happen, what are the pros and cons? And if I'm going to die someplace, I'd much rather die in the Bob Marshall wilderness than anywhere else. And I'm formulating these plans as I'm on, let's just call it a very uncomfortable eight-hour drive, <laughs> and as per usual, I'm way late, and I get to the pot-bellied stallion's house, and we're packing up gear, and he's like, hey, man, everything, uh, everything all right? You seem a little different, and, you know, our relationship has progressed a lot at this point, right? Like, we've been down a lot of roads together. He ran over a good bird dog of mine. <laughs> I uh, had a very short dating stint with one of his sisters. <laughs> We've hashed a few things out. <laughs> and I say, yeah, man, something, something is wrong with me. But I really don't want to tell you about it because I think it's going to screw up our hunt. 
And he's like, man, that sounds like a hemorrhoid. <laughs> and I said, well, please tell me. So long story short, we uh, get on the trail. And we're heading into like the most god awful patch of blow down timber on the planet. And every time we go in there, we have like these grand schemes of like maybe this will be the time. And this is like the queen mother of all mule deer spots. Like the, it's public land, it's not a draw unit, it exists. And we have never managed to pull a frickin' mule deer out of there. But you see them, and they're just like fleeting glimpses because it's just this horrid terrain where you can't get up there and like view territory. You gotta be in the spot. And so typically what you're seeing is no deer, but then you find like these mega tracks. And then between the two of us, as we split up, we find like there's this, like, yeah, man, I thought it was a raghorn bull going over the hill, and there he was. It's like, ah! So we're going up, up the trail. We got three days worth of stuff on our backs. It's six degrees. The wind's blowing. We're pushing snow at about knee level, and we're chugging, and we have this plan. And this is like already the most uncomfortable hike of my life, mind you. And I have already gotten a bull during archery season. The pot-bellied stallion is elkless. So the plan is, if we see a mule deer, I get first dibs on the deer. We see an elk, he gets first dibs on the elk. And we, of course, are on the trail way late. We're aiming for this ridge. We drop into this big valley, we hit the creek, it's creek because there is no sign of tires, or else it'd be a crick. We covered that. <laughs> Chop out the ice, fill up our, uh, you know, big jugs for camp, strap those on our back on top of the rest of our gear. You know, and winter gear is just heavy. And we start chugging up the mountain. And we're slipping and we're falling on deadfall and it's just miserable, and we're aiming for this saddle, and the pot-bellied stallion's like, hey man, I just saw a bull. I was like, yeah, where is it? He's like, it's on the opposite side of the canyon. I said, yeah, well, man, it's four o'clock. Let's just get to camp, set up camp. That's stupid. <laughs> and he said, give me the spotting scope. I want to take a look at that bull. I said, Listen, it's half an hour until dark. Look at the terrain. I, I will go over there if you say we go over there. That's the deal. If I give you this spotting scope, I know you, and it does not matter how big that bull is, you're going to want to go. Give me the spotting scope. So I give him the spotting scope, and he's just like, oh my God, I think, it's, I think there's a seventh point on that left side. We got to go get that. He said, reminder, this is stupid. <laughs> he said, we got to go. You said you'd go. So I am in, we'll just call it misery at this point throw the pack back on, and we proceed to slide, slip, fall, snow-covered down this mountain that we just climbed up, cross the creek that we just chipped ice out of to fill up water, immediately start up the other side. And as we start up the other side, we're neck and neck at this point, and I turn to him and I say, hey, fatty, I know I can get up there in time, but I don't think you can. And we just go. 
and we're chugging, and we're neck and neck for a while, and I am just angry. And I am uncomfortable, and I'm chugging, and I get up to where we're supposed to have, like, our, you know, from looking across the canyon, we're like, yeah, we get up to that rock. There he's going to be, piece of cake. And I get up to that rock, and it's timber covered, and I can't see the bull, and there is no pot-bellied stallion coming up the mountain. And now it's just this smooth saddle over to where I know if that bull's still around, I'm going to have a shot. And then the wheels really start turning, and it becomes like not a me hemorrhoidal issue. It becomes, man, it's my good hunting buddy. This is like our one time a year trip, and we had a plan. If I go down this saddle and he's not here, I'm going to shoot that bull. And so I'm waiting, and I go so far as to pull out my GPS, get it situated, pull up the sun-moon calendar, find the exact time of sunset, look at the fish and game deal that I keep in my pouch for the sunrise-sunset table, and I'm like, okay, 12 minutes. I'm like, gah, gah, oh. what's it going to hurt if I just walk down the saddle? I'll know where the bull is. This could still work out. Which, of course, as you know, the other half of my brain is just like, oh, my God, you are going to screw over your best buddy, your hunting partner. You're violating all the ethical and moral codes you've established. And maybe we didn't get that whole sister thing figured out. Like, maybe we got some other things. <laughs> and so I moved down the saddle. And there is the bull. And he is laying in his bed at 70 yards. <laughs> and I'm like, OK, seven minutes. I'm like, man, where is this guy? I was like, yeah, uh, uh. And it's like, listen, you know, you work really hard for these things, public land bulls, it's right there. Yeah, yeah. And the bull stands up. And I like, put the most grief-stricken, agonizing round into the chamber. <laughs> and I'm like, where is this guy? This is like a save me. And I slide up to a tree that I'm like, listen, if you step up to the tree, he'll see you. And then if he looks like he's getting away, so I slide up to the tree, and I'm like, three minutes left. I lean up against the tree, and bang! <laughs> and I'm like, shit! <laughs> and I got full camp on my back. It's six degrees. The wind's starting to howl. We're in dead timber. And I just turned my life from relatively simple with, you know, maybe some serious medical implications down the road <laughs> to like this ultra turmoil, and I can't even move. And the bull's just laying there, and I'm just standing there, and I hear. And I can't turn around, and I just hear, <laughs> did you get him? <sighs> How'd you get up here so fast? <laughs> that hurt me. I know it hurt you. <sighs> <sighs> did you get him? 
I'm like, yeah, I got him. He's like, oh, good. He's like, I know that's the biggest bull you have ever shot. And I'm crying inside at this point because this man, my friend, is the best hunting partner on the planet. And he was so happy that I got that bull. And it was my biggest bull ever. And we went over and we stood next to the bull. And it is colder than cold at this point. And we have to search high and low, which we will do later, just to find a place that we can kind of convince ourselves that a tree is not going to fall on us. The night is far from over, and we're staring at this thing, and we're taking it in, and the logistics are going through your head. And I, I, I just said, hey, man, I, I have got to tell you how much all of our time in the woods together has meant to me, and how through all the things that we have done, especially back when we weren't nearly as smart, all the things that we're doing now, how your attitude has made all of those trips what they are, and I just, I love you to death, man. And I can't tell you how much these trips mean to me. And he just kind of looked up and he said, yeah, buddy, this is a special one. Just you, me, and the roid. <laughs> Thank you very much. <laughs>